Being chill takes a lot of energy, but it could be a lot cooler if it didn't, and that's a weird science effect that boggles my mind. As every year sets a new record as the coldest year of the rest of your life, finding ways to keep cool in the future becomes ever more important. Thankfully, air conditioning is nothing new, and it has been a literal lifesaver as heat waves ravage the world. But air conditioning happens to be a double-edged sword with a third side, a triple-edged sword. I think I read about a knife like that and the things they carried. Or was it Slaughterhouse-Five? I don't remember. Anyway, we normally associate air conditioners with cold air, but in reality, they actually heat air up. Sure, they make the small space that you're in cooler and feel more comfortable. It does this by allowing a compressed refrigerant to evaporate, absorbing the heat in the room. And then it compresses that heated refrigerant so it can pump it outside of the room. But nothing is 100% efficient, and air conditioners aren't even close, and that compression process creates a lot of excess heat. That heat, via the compressed coolant, is then pumped to the outside portion of the air conditioner where a fan blows off that excess excess heat outside. Now cooled off compressed refrigerant is then pumped back into the house where it's allowed to evaporate and absorb more excess heat starting the whole process over again. Now if you live out where I do that's not a huge deal because one little air conditioner isn't going to heat up all of this space. But in densely populated areas like cities where you have thousands of people running thousands of air conditioners trying to beat the heat all of that excess heat starts adding up and it can raise the ambient temperature in a city up to three and a half degrees Fahrenheit. Now three and a half degrees might not sound like a lot until you've lived in a house that has both a thermostat and another human living in it. Divorces have happened over less than three and a half degrees. And air conditioners do this all while consuming a lot of energy. In fact, air conditioners make up on average 20% of a building's total energy use. Which obviously taxes energy grid infrastructure and doesn't do a whole lot to help the whole world getting warmer thing. And all of this is just exacerbating the heat island problem that cities already suffer from. Cities have a lot of cars that are really hot and they've got a lot of concrete and pavement which absorbs sunlight and heat and retains it. All told, cities can be up to seven degrees hotter than outlying areas and they don't cool off as quickly at night. But we got this new material and it's gonna solve all our problems. Not really, I just felt like summoning my inner Terry Crews, but it could make them a lot better. These materials are called cool materials and super cool materials. And they're not called that because they've got awesome sunglasses like this. They're called that because like Scarlett Johansson's dressing room mirror, it reflects what's responsible for making most of us all hot and bothered. So Solar radiation. And the joke actually works all the way through because because solar radiation is light and that's what reflecting off the mid never mind. And we're all familiar with this. Things heat up when they sit in the sun. Obviously, you'll burn your feet walking barefoot on a sunny day on asphalt, but concrete won't be so bad. Concrete's a lighter color, it reflects more of that solar radiation, making it cooler. But the problem is that our atmosphere, you know, air, also absorbs a lot of that solar radiation. And that makes it really hard for materials, even really reflective ones, to cool down more than the ambient temperature. In step cool materials. These are just basic materials designed to reflect as much of that radiation as possible. It's basically the same thing as that sort of reflective foil on the inside of your hamburger wrapping. That allows it to stay at or near ambient temperature in direct sunlight and can even make it cooler than ambient temperature when not in direct sunlight. So in theory, coating buildings in this type of material will not allow them to absorb as much heat, which means an air conditioner doesn't have to work as hard, doesn't use as much energy, doesn't create as much excess heat in the area. But okay, whatever. We all already know that white is cooler than black. I mean, it's it's definitely not, but like in the temperature sense, it is. So where's the weird science fact? Well, in steps, super cool materials. See, well, the ambient air is really good at capturing most types of solar radiation. It's very bad at capturing a very specific wavelength of infrared radiation. So in 2014, a material was invented that focused specifically on reflecting that specific wavelength of infrared radiation. And because the atmosphere can't trap that, those materials actually stay cooler than ambient temp. And that's super cool because not only would this this act is basically energy-free air conditioning for any building it covers. It also acts as air conditioning for the outside because that warm ambient air cools off as it touches that cooler surface. Now this first material stayed up to 10 degrees cooler than ambient temperature, which is huge. Since then, in the lab, these super cool materials have been made out of pretty much every material you can imagine. Plastic, paint, metal, even wood. But Chinese researchers just may take the cake. While there's some skepticism from the scientific community about their results, According to them, they created a super cooling material that can stay around 30 degrees cooler than ambient temperature. And it's made out of, of, of freeze-dried fried gelatin and, and salmon sperm DNA.
Sorry guys, I, I didn't read into it much more than that. I, I didn't know if I wanted to know more. Now sadly, there's still some pretty big obstacles between these objects leaving the lab and layering Los Angeles. Economic scalability being a big one. Like seriously, where do you get that much salmon sperm DNA? Some of these are really energy intensive to make, offsetting some of the benefits that they would provide. And some of them that aren't made out of salmon sperm DNA require potentially hazardous materials to produce. But the fact that we're contemplating keeping cool by covering our condos and cladding that cast off what cosmically cooks us well, that is pretty mind-boggling.